If variables and tables are the bricks that we build scripts out of, then certainly operators and conditionals are the mortar that binds them. For example, in our script here from the last lesson, you can see we've used the equal sign. That's an operator. We've also used a plus sign. That is also an operator. So now if we go into our help file, Autoplay Media Studio help, and we go under the scripting guide, expressions and operators, you'll see there's a list of the different operators here. So we can take a look and you'll see that there's arithmetic operators such as addition, subtraction, and multiplication. There's relational operators a little further down where we can compare numbers and values and variables um, greater than, less than, um, equal to, not equal to, for example. Um, and a little further down there's logical operators such as and, or, or not. For example, if we're testing a value, we can ask a uh, script, if the name equals Dan or the name equals Bob, please go to page 3, otherwise go to page 4, etc. So those are logical operators. If you go a little further down, we've got the concatenation operator that we've already used, and that's two periods. That's used to connect two values. If you remember in our example, we actually connected two names from our table and we've got also something called operator precedence. Okay, so much like math in junior high school, there's a precedence to the way things work. And if you're going to use several operators in the statement, you need to read this little section and make sure that you're following that. They're also said to have associativity here, as it says, which is a way of describing which expressions are performed first when the operators have equal precedence. So it's important to note this. For example, here, because of the order of pref precedence here, this particular script, a plus 1 is less than b over 2 plus 1, will get executed in the same way as it would if you put brackets around each side, because the precedence falls naturally in that way. Okay, So it's important to read through this operator page. It's one short page, and learn the different types of operators, how they work, and the basic rules of them, because basically that's going to drive all your scripts. For example, when we need to compare things, we need to really have a good command of these uh, six relational operators. They're very simple and easy to understand at least, so you can sort of uh, absorb this in very little time. If you've done any scripting at all, you'll probably already know this. Okay, so let's go back to our page and let's take a look at a conditional. Okay, in this particular case, we've got our dialog message box here and it's acting upon a value, C. Okay, so let's go here and we'll say C equals 0, A equals 2, B equals 4, C equals A plus B. Actually, let's change that to B. C equals A times B, just for practice. We're going to put an asterisk in there instead of a plus sign. Okay, so our answer is going to come back 8 for C. Now we're going to set up a conditional statement. So we'll say if, and then we'll put a bracket, and we'll say C equals 8, and we have to use two equal signs. If you use only one, it's going to assign a value. Remember, one equal sign is the operator for assignment. Two equal sign is the relational operator. Okay, so if C equals 8, and we'll put another bracket, and we'll say then dialog message, my title. Now we're going to remove this value of C here and we're going to put in two quotation marks and just type in C is 8. Okay, so we've just changed our value into a plain old everyday string here and that's good enough for the purpose of this demo. So we're going to say if C equals 8 then display this message box and then we're going to say else so that means if C is any value other than 8 and I'm going to just cut and paste, you can freely cut and paste in our script editor I'm going to cut and paste the dialog message line down here, and I'm just going to type in not, so C is not 8. And then we have to type in end to end our conditional statement. And let's just go ahead and run this. Now, of course, it's returned C is 8, because actually we knew that before we set up the script. Okay, so let's press OK to close this. And let's go back here, and let's let add a another layer to this um, and we're going to say if C is not equal to 8 so we're going to add one of these tildes that's the squiggly little line in the upper right of your keyboard and that denotes if C is not equal to 8 then you would write here in the first case C is not 8 else 
I'm going to change this language here to C might be 8. Okay? <clears throat> so let's go ahead and run that. And you can see it says C might be 8. Because we know actually C is 8. Okay, in this case, so what we've basically done is we've tested the value to see if it was equal to or not equal to 8. It's a very simple process. Let's create another script just to make sure we're clear on conditionals. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the whole entire top part of our script and the end statement. I'm just going to leave the dialog message and the application exit bit for now. So we're going to type up here again my name equals Corey and in the next line here we're going to create a conditional statement. We're going to say if we're going to create a bracket and say my name equals and we're going to put this in quotation Corey again a bracket then and I'm going to remove these lines so the dialog message box comes up here and it's going to say if my name equals Corey then dialog message hello Corey and then I'm going to put in an else statement you don't have to put in the else statement I could have typed end right there if I wanted but just for the purposes of demo I'm going to cut and paste the dialog message action again and this time I'm going to change the word Corey to person. So basically we've created a little custom greeting here and we could for example take someone's name from an input object and then test it like this. So we've set a value, my name equals Corey, so we know it's going to test true but in the real world you wouldn't know because you would be getting input from a user and we're going to say if my name equals Corey then give us a dialog message that says hello Corey and if my name doesn't equal Corey then give us a message that says hello person. So it's going to Let's go ahead and preview that by pressing F5. And you can see it says Hello Corey. Now we're going to close this down and we're going to change the original name to Mike. And we're going to run it again. And what do you think is going to happen this time? It's going to say to us Hello person because the name does not equal Corey anymore. So basically that's touching on conditionals and operators and that's enough to get you started. If you have any questions, join us in the forum. And definitely, it's very important that you go to the help file and check out the area, the one single page on operators. It's going to help you a lot.